Hi, this is Drew with Finale. In this short tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Groups feature to organize the timeline, the script window, and how to use the Groups feature to restrict the number of e-matches on a pin when addressing a show. Let's get started. I'm going to select position number one and add a few items. I'm going to create a fan by pressing F on the keyboard. We'll fan these out at 40 degrees total, plus and minus 20. Here's our fan. I'm going to scrub through it. Looks like this. Great. Now we can see that we have three individual items here on the timeline. I also see we have three individual items here in the script. If I select the items, I press G on my keyboard, that corresponds to group. It's the same as going up to script menu, groups, combine as group, which is G. You can see here also the keyboard shortcut or hot key for breaking apart the group is, is shift G. So we'll select this, which is the same as pressing G. Now you can see that the three items have been collapsed together as one, which really helps organize the timeline if you have a lot going on in the show. You can also see how over here in the script, we now have the, uh, the parentheses with the number three before the description, which indicates that there are three items there in that one row. So we've really cleaned up the, the timeline and the script, and that will really help as the show gets more complicated. So now let's make a, a sequence going across the, uh, the positions here. I'll select, uh, select this item, copy it, select the remaining positions, paste this item in. Now we'll use S to create a sequence. I'll do a time interval of 0.2, uh, first to last, meaning the firing order will go from left to right across the positions ordered alphabetically. I'll select grouping to retain the grouping so that the, uh, at each position, three shots fire together before proceeding to the next position. There we go. Let's give it a look. Perfect. So now instead of having um, 27 individual items on the timeline, we just have these nine groups. Let's say we want to, uh, we could actually even make a group of the groups to do this. So if you had a, a firing pattern like this or a sequence that you wanted to use again in the show, you could copy all of these. I'll do Control C, Control V to paste. But you could even make a group by selecting those groups and pressing G. And now you have a group uh, that includes all of those items. That would be very easy to copy this and use it again in another part of your show. So that's how you can use groups uh, to organize and make it easier to, uh, to keep track of items in the script and on the timeline as well. What I'm going to do now is demonstrate how to restrict the number of e-matches or control the number of e-matches on a pin when doing addressing. So for that example, we use Shift G to break apart this particular group, uh, these groups over here. And now you can see we have 27 individual comments. Uh, so there are no groups here. And over here you can see that we have we still have the nine groups. So let's look at addressing. We'll go to addressing, address show, which is the P hotkey. Uh, we're set up to address for fire one. It doesn't make any difference for this example. We'll just leave that alone. Um, I'm set up to address with a max of three E matches per pin. For the first example, We'll just go with the defaults. I just removed something there to go for the defaults. We'll bring that back in a little bit. So we're just going to order by position and then event time. And the only restriction on a module um, is that it has to be on the same position. So let's give it a try. OK. Right now, the script is collapsed to show all three items in each group on the same line. To get a better look at the script, I'm going to actually go in and change a setting to allow us to see each individual line of script. So I'm going to uncheck show one row per group. So here we can see how these first three shots are together on the same module in the same pin, which is what we'd expect because we addressed the show to have a max of three e-matches per pin. That applies to the entire show, including the items that were not grouped. So it's the same throughout the entire show. But let's say that instead we would like the items that are grouped to share the same pin, but we would not like the items that are separated to share the same pin. So let's give that a try. We'll address the show again by hitting P on the keyboard, and then we'll go down here and we'll do each pin is restricted to a single, and then we'll choose group. By doing this, we tell uh, the addressing algorithm that we would like 
uh, each pin restricted to a single group, which will in turn force individual items to be on separate pins while allowing the grouped items to be addressed together on the same pin. Let's give it a try. All right, going back to the top of the script, we can see that the grouped items, which are here on the left-hand side of the timeline, still have three items per each pin. So here we have module one and Q1, three items together. The same at position two, which is module two, pin one, the same at position three, et cetera, et cetera. But if we go over to the second group, the second set, I should say, because these are not grouped in Finale 3D terms, we'll see that over here, instead of having three items on the same pin, they're now broken apart into three separate pins. So by restricting a pin to a single group, the absence of any grouping over here forces these items to be only on a single pin per, per device. So that's a great way to allow you to have multiple items on the same pin where you desire it over here with the groups and where you want only a single e-match or a single device per pin you can do that by not using the grouping option and using that pin constraint. Thanks for watching. Check out the YouTube channel for more great videos and don't forget to subscribe.